Inmates, happy new year. This is the first bike I've got coming in this year and it's gonna be rolling out of the barn in the next couple of hours when the customer picks it up. But I wanted to show you this one because it's the very first bike that I have fitted a pair of D3s, can you see them there? Now, the light above it is a D4. Now, you're gonna see a difference here because th this is what I really like about the new D3 is because look how much brighter it is, look how much whiter and crisper that light is. Pretty spectacular, isn't it? This customer's got the R1250 GS Rally. Been booked in for the last couple of months because we are so well uh, booked up in advance. He initially wanted just a D4 bundle with an Inoff K3. As soon as he realized that the D3s were available, then he managed to grasp one of those early on as a pre-order. So let me just show you what I've done to this bike, how I've set it up. You don't have to set yours up like this, but I just thought I'd quickly run through with you how it's all set up. But I also wanted to tell you about the video that's coming next week. I hope it'll be next week. I'm filming this weekend. So today is Friday the 7th, I think it is. But this weekend I'm filming a comparison with all of the Denali pods. So every single pod that Denali do. I've had Dave here working for me, making frames up and putting all of my GS mounts on there so we can actually get this all set up and put every single light on there. I've had permission from the local farmer to go down one of his private fields and set up a rig down there so we can do daytime tests and nighttime tests. I've been speaking to professional photographers so we can get the settings absolutely perfect on the camera so you won't see any auto adjustments happening. That has been an absolute nightmare trying to sort all that out because of all the exposure compensation that goes on even though you're in manual mode. Point is, we've got that video coming very, very soon and I'm gonna be showing you the D3 fog lights, the D3 driving spotlights, which you've got, you see on this bike here, and the DR1s, the D4s, the D7s, the D2s, DMs, the S4s. Have I missed any out? You're gonna see the whole lot, all right? So that's gonna be coming very soon, so don't miss that video. So let me quickly run you through this, exactly how I've set it all up, and I'm gonna come back at the end and talk to you about some other stuff. Right, so I've got the laptop currently plugged into the bike, because I want to talk you through all of the settings, how I've got it set up. So let me quickly record my screen. So the customer has asked to have the D4s. Let me just turn off the lights, because I don't think we need them on right now. Let's turn that off. So the customer has asked to have his D4s set so when I indicate right and left, they turn off on the respective sides. So we've had to set up the left D4 on the red circuit, that's left light one, and the right D4 on the white circuit just here, that's right light one. Then we've got the horn just here on the blue circuit, and then on the yellow circuit, I've set up both D3 lights on one circuit because we both agreed it was unnecessary to have the right and left lights switching off when indicating because they are further away from the indicators on the bike. On to auxiliary lights one. So as you look here, red and white, red and white, yep. That is your light pair one. So on here, we've got the running light at 20% for daytime and also 20% for nighttime. So that is the dipped running light settings. And then for full beam, evening and nighttime, we set it to 100%, but you know, you can change this however you want. So then on the right hand side, we've decided to say, yes, we want it to, we want the light to switch off on the respective side when we use the turn signals. We want them to strobe when we hit the horn, we want them to strobe when we flash the pass. So when I flick the flasher three times, the D4 lights will definitely strobe on three pulses. And then the final one, the inverse flashing with the hazards. So when I put the hazard lights on, they will alternate with the hazard lights. Modulation is turned off. Some people like that, but a majority of people don't. But if you turn that on, you will get a flickering through your lights. So turn that off. It's a common question I get a lot from people where they've hooked their lights up and they've got flickering. And they email me to say, Steve, really pleased with the setup, but my lights are flickering. What's wrong? It's usually because that's turned on. So make sure it's turned off. Three wire dimming. These are Denali 2.0 three wire data dim lights. That is the three wire technology that right there. If you turn it off, they'll still work, but you'll notice your dimming is more harsh. So turn that on and you'll get very nice dimming and fading when you are adjusting your lights. So make sure that is on. Auxiliary lights too. 
So this is the second pair. These are the D3s. You can see it's denoted with the yellow circle just there. So with this one, we've decided to set it as 20 for daytime and 20 for nighttime, which is the same as the D4s. We've decided not to have them turning off when I hit the turn signal because we've got them on one circuit. If I selected that, they would both go off both sides. So that's turned off. Uh, strobe when horn is active. Yeah, we want that on. Uh, strobe flash to pass. Yeah, we want that on. Inverse flashing with hazards. I don't think it's necessary because we've got that with the D4s anyway. Modulation turned off. Three wide dimming is on because they, they are three wide dimming lights. Then the horn is enabled, but we can turn it off if you want to. So there we go. Now, it's important to know that we can change all these settings just by hovering over them and clicking them. So if I go to red circuit there, you can change all the settings just there. Also, a lot of people don't realize that if you hover over the amps, so a D4, if I remember rightly, is three, it runs on 3.3 amps. So we only need four amps, but we can change the amps to what is necessary for that light. So I'm gonna pick four amps. The D3s are, if I remember correctly from reading up the stats, I think a three amp draw. So there's two D3s on this yellow circuit, which is six amps. So I'm gonna pick the next one up, which is 7.5 amps. Now I've already tested all this and nothing's tripping. The Easy Can is not having any problems with it at all. Um, if it does have a problem, the Easy Can starts flashing red and the lights turn off. It's just a simple circuit breaker. Right, so that's all set up. If I go to here and I start, so if I, click, I just clicked on that orange circle at the top and now I can start messing with the lights. So if I start sliding that up, you'll notice my left D4 is coming on, so I can adjust that. If I go to my yellow, sorry, my white circuit, I can do the right D4. If I go to the yellow circuit, you can see both the D3s coming on. So I can test that on here. You can also see what they are peaking at. So I mentioned the D3s are three amps each, so together they are peaking at 6.4 amps, and each D3 is peaking at, well, the white circuit is 4.4 amps and the red circuit is 3.29 amps. And it's obviously happy, it's not tripping, so that, that, that's all well and good. If I go to the blue circuit, now beware, the horn is gonna go off. And there's the sound bomb. And that peaks at 51.18 amps, and we've got it set to 25. So there is a lot of allowances in the Easy Can for the amps to peak. Don't worry, it's not going to trip. I think you'll probably find if you were to sit here on full beam and hold your horn down for a minute, God help you if you do that, you might find that the Easy Cam will say, hang on, no, we're gonna cut out now. And then to reset that, you'd have to turn the ignition off and turn it back on again and everything would reset. But that's not what a horn's intended to do. You're not supposed to sit there and for one minute and hold your horn in. But it does allow you to obviously hit your horn. Right, so close that down, stop recording. Right, so let's switch the bike on and I'll show you what it can do. Just from using the controls here on the handlebar, I'm going to turn off the D4 lights. I'm holding down the turn signal indicator for three to four seconds. So now we've just got the D3s on. Now, I think they look really white and crisp. So the test we're gonna be doing this weekend when we're out in the middle of a field in pitch black, I think we're gonna see these D3s really take the stage and show themselves up with this very, very white, brighter light than all the rest of the range. Now, it doesn't mean the rest of the range are yellow, it just means because the D4s, the S4s and D D7s, they're all super bright white, but when you put them side by side, we're seeing this whiter light because it's a very different lens and I will walk you through the D3 in that next video so you can see exactly how the D3 is put together, the lens, the, the LEDs, how, diff, how much they differ between the rest of the range. Now if I go full beam, you can see there is 100% on the, the headlight and 100% on the D3s. Uh, I just need to put a torch into the cockpit of the, there we go. So that, that's how you do it. If you get your torch on your phone and stick it into, the, into there, it gets rid of the, the nighttime dipped beam on, on the bike. The, the actual main headlight seems brighter, but it won't be. I can guarantee it won't be. Um, and we'll, we'll see that on the tests that we do at the weekend. 
Right, and if I indicate right, I've programmed the D3 to stay on, indicate left, I've programmed to stay on as well, and if I use my hazards, I've programmed them to stay on as well. And they are, remember, as I said, they're at 20%. And if I flash three times, one, two, three, you can see the D3s are strobing. So now I'm gonna turn the D4s back on, hold down the turn signal for four seconds, and, oh, and here they come. There we are. So when I indicate right now, you'll notice the D4 goes off, and we've got that. And the D3 stays on, indicate left, and we've got that. When I hit the hazards, we've got this. And when I flash three times, I programmed them all to strobe. One, two, three and we've got them doing that. And when I hit the horn, they're all strobing. Okay, so what did you think? Oh, have I shown you my, uh, my little beanie hats? If you want one of these, they're on the website. I do give these away when orders are over a certain value, so. So with the D3s I fitted to this customer's bike, he's got the spotlight lenses, but I'll also be giving him these, which are kind of like a hybrid spot. So you, if you look on there, you'll notice the top part is mottled. That will give you your floodlight beam, which I thought was quite peculiar because it's on the top, not the bottom. And we've always said with the D4s that we need to spin the, the lens around. So the floods at the bottom and the spots are at the top. Uh, but with the D3s, I'm waiting on actual confirmation from Denali on this but uh, I want to know if the pod can hang. And I'm starting to think that they can't. I think that they actually do have to sit. And there's a lot of, a lot of debate over the S4s in the past because with, with the S4s, you can't change the lens around at all. But then after actually testing it in real terms out on the road, I found that the S4s, it didn't matter whether you had them upside down or the right way up. So, uh, and, and I, I just basically advise people to have them standing because of the fact you couldn't turn the lenses like you can on D4s, but they are very different. Whereas with a D4, if you have it the right way around or upside down, and if you didn't alter the lenses to accommodate, then you would actually see a slight different light pattern on the road. Whereas the S4s, you didn't. But I think with these D3s, I, I'm, I think, and I will confirm in my next video when I get solid solid proof and advice from Denali that these have to go this way around. We can't hang them that way, but I will confirm. I just wanted to make this a very quick one because I've got loads of videos on my channel showing you how to set up your Easy Can, your Can Smart, so you can get this all on your bike and you can configure it yourself. So this is kind of like a repeat video, but this is the very first bike that I have fitted D3s to, so it's quite exciting. Apart from the D3s that are on my own bike, but they are, engineering samples which are coming coming off because I don't think they are officially road legal. So I'll be taking those off and sending those back. Um, one other thing, why should you be buying your next Denali equipment from me? Well, I try and make things a little bit different and I try to give a kind of customer service that no one else is giving. So as I've mentioned in previous videos, we hold massive stock inventory here and we try and keep as much stuff in stock at all times. Now, during these current times, it's difficult to keep stock in because of these current times and, and supply chain issues and everything going on. But I am doing my utmost best to constantly keep reinvesting in stock. So we've always got more than what we need here, knowing full well that it will eventually all sell. Otherwise, I'm gonna be burning my fingers. But one of the other things, so because I fit the stuff to the bikes, I see problems, well not necessarily problems, but I see things coming up and I think to myself, mm, that could be a little bit better if we did this. And what I'm gonna talk about now is the crash bar clamps. So these D3s on this bike have got the Denali crash bar clamps. They are so versatile. Now I also do the SW Motec bar clamp as well, which needs to be, if you decide to, to have those, because they are kind of more designed to have an SW Motec light fitted to them, they'll still work with a Denali light, but you've got to kind of think outside the box and 
and, and when the kit arrives, you get lots of little nuts and bolts in there and stuff, but you can make it work and it looks really good. And what I love about the FW Motec clamp is that it's got rubber inserts inside it, which means it protects your crash bars, whether they are powder coated or not. If they are powder coated or sprayed, well then you're definitely gonna scratch and mark your bars. And even if you go for the silver bars, if you haven't got a rubber insert inside there, it can still mark the bar. And because when we put the Denali crash bar mounts on, we tighten them up, we step back, we have a look, we try and line it up. We're thinking it's not quite right. I need to loosen off the nut, reposition it. And then you suddenly see a little black mark when you're by thinking, oh, that's, it, you know, it breaks your heart on your brand new bike when you look at your crash bar and you've got a little mark on it. So what I've done is I've sourced really, really nice rubber inserts to go inside the Denali 22 millimeter crash bar mounts. Well, all of the mounts they do, the fork mounts, the, the larger crash bar mounts, and the most popular crash bar mount, which is the 22 to 28 millimeter crash bar mounts. When you buy them from me, you will get a rubber insert to actually stick inside the actual crash bar clamp itself before you then put it onto the bike, which means you can keep on readjusting the settings on your crash bar mounts so you won't be marking your bars. So I think that's a nice little thing from me. I don't charge any extra for it. I just buy the, the rubber in bulk and then I, we cut strips off and put it inside the box for your convenience. Another great reason why you should buy from me. <laughs> okay, if you want one of these beanies, you know where to come. And there's gonna be new t-shirts um, I've already been discussing because I've got the new brand logo. What do you think to that? Please leave a comment down below with the new logo. I think it's really cool. Actually, the new, the new logo. Oh. Do, do you know what? I'm, I'm, in, a, in a later video, when I launch the new merchandise, because I've got a couple of bits that I wanna bring to the table and not just t-shirts. I've got some other cool thing that I wanna to bring to the table. When I do that, I want to talk to you about how the branding came about because the person who designed my logo is pretty friggin' famous. Anyway, I will talk about him and her later on in the year. Right, but for now, before this video gets too long, keep an eye out for the next A Bike Thing video showing you all the range on um, testing them out there in the fields, pitch black. Till then, <laughs> I can't remember what I used to say in the videos. Oh yeah, until then, stay safe behind bars. I'll see you in the next video.